Welcome back. Uh, in this video, I want to introduce a cost of resources in order to uh, construct units. So what I want to do first is open my units folder and the parent unit class, and I'm going to make a new variable here called resource amount. Uh, and of course, you could have more than one resource in your game. You could have uh, uh, different costs here, of, uh, let's say gold, lumber, uh, oil, who knows what, whatever your inputs might be. For the example here, I'm just using a single resource and I'm setting that to an integer. And uh, what I'll do here is now go into each of my unit uh, blueprints and set a fixed amount that that's going to cost to build them. So I'll just open up each one here. Unit style one will set this resource amount to, let's say, 150. Uh, unit style two, let's say uh, 200. And uh, resource truck, uh, let's set that one to uh, just 100. Okay, so now I've defined a unit cost in my variable for the parent unit class. Uh, so what I want to do now is enforce that when we try to build the unit. So we'll go to our uh, player controller, and uh, I'll just find the event graph here, and I'll find the produce unit uh, function, which is right here. And so it's a server pass-through. We pass through to the server and tell them to add uh, whichever unit that we've clicked on to the queue for that building. And this is where we want to do our, our check here. So I'm just going to move this over like this. Uh, and I'm going to use, I'm going to collapse my new nodes to a macro, so I'm not going to make much more room than this, and I'll just drag off, I'll close, or uh, unhook this, I should say. And uh, what I'll do now is, we're, we'll do a, a branch. First we'll say, check if the uh, player has the required resources. So I want to grab my resource amount here, and get that. And uh, we'll check if it's less than, and from unit here I can drag up and say uh, defaults, and get this resource amount. Uh, okay, and so now we've, we're have we checking if we have uh, less than the amount required, and so if that's false, then uh, we have more, and so we're, we're good to go. Um, so what we'll do is deduct, so we'll say set now our resource amount from the false pin, and uh, we'll set it to our current resource amount, duplicate that, uh, minus and then I'll plug in the resource uh, cost for this unit. All right, and so now uh, that'll deduct the resource cost for the unit, and then we can uh, go ahead and add the unit to the queue. Uh, okay, and so that covers basically deducting the cost if we have the resources on hand, but uh, let's say we don't have the resources, so we have less than the amount needed, and so this uh, comes through true. What we want to do is display a message on the screen on our UI. Uh, so I'm going to go into my UI, uh, main UI widget here. Uh, and first here I'll just grab the uh, minimap overlay, select that. I'll make it a bit smaller now, let's say 350 by 350. Uh, drag it over here to the corner a bit more, maybe this into the center a bit more. All right, and okay, what I want to do here is add a text. And I'll drag that just to the middle of the screen here, roughly. And I'll set the text here to not enough resources, exclamation mark. All right. And uh, we could just set this to uh, visible and not visible as needed. Uh, but I'm just going to do one extra step here and make a, a quick function that will fade the message away after it shows it. Uh, so what I want to do here is instead of setting, uh, well, first off, I'll set a name for this. We'll call it the not enough resources message uh, is variable. And I'm going to set the render opacity, find that here in the details, and I'm going to set it to zero. Okay, so that's basically similar to setting it to uh, hidden instead of visible, uh, but we're using the opacity instead, set it to zero. And uh, now I'm going to go to the event graph, and uh, oh, I'll just close this. So on the event graph here, what I want to do is make a new custom event. Uh, show uh, not enough resources message. All right, and so what we'll do here is drag in this uh, not enough resources message variable, and I'm going to set the render opacity, and we'll set it to one, so it'll be fully uh, visible. Uh, and then we'll start our uh, fade uh, function here. So what I want to do is I'm going to go set timer by event. And uh, for this one, we will, from the return value, I'm going to promote to variable and call it the not enough resources uh, fade timer. And I'll set the time here to 0.1 seconds. 
looping. And I'm going to uh, set an initial start delay here of one second. I'll drag here from the event, say custom event, uh, fade not enough resources message. All right, and every tenth of a second, what we'll do is set the opacity. Let's grab the reference here, uh, set render opacity, and uh, we'll set it to its current value minus a little bit. So uh, we'll drag here and say get render opacity uh, minus. And we'll subtract, uh, let's say, 0.05. Okay, and uh, so basically it's going to take uh, 20 ticks through here at 0.05 per before it's uh, back to zero, the opacity. And so that's going to take at, at a tenth of a second per uh, iteration, uh, two full seconds to fade away, and that's after a one second uh, start delay. So uh, just a simple function here, and that's going to... Uh, uh, be frame rate independent. It's going to take uh, three seconds total, no matter what system or platform or FPS or anything like that. Uh, okay, last thing to do here then is say uh, check the render opacity, and if it's less than or equal to zero, uh, then we're going to cancel that timer. So we'll just say branch, uh, and I'll grab that timer reference here, get, and I'll say clear. Clear and invalidate timer by handle. Okay, uh, so that's pretty much it here. I'm going to comment that and say, uh, show not enough resources message. And then uh, back in the player controller here, uh, from the true here, we can say uh, main UI widget, show not enough resources message. Uh, okay, and uh, so far so good, but there is a small problem with this, and I'll show you what that is. We'll get started here by just testing it out. Okay, I'll host here, and uh, we'll check out this building and say, uh, we have zero resources, and I'll try to build something. Not enough resources. All right, that works, and uh, it faded away. That's great. Uh, but now let's say I go and uh, open a client window here, join, and we'll try the same thing. Uh, make a unit here. And uh, it doesn't make the unit, but it also doesn't show me the message. Where's my not enough resources message, right? Uh, and so that's, that's, it's throwing this error here when I was clicking, saying uh, access none, trying to read the property main UI widget. And uh, the reason for that is because we're piping this here through the server. This is a server event uh, where it's trying to add the unit to the queue. And uh, so a server, of course, can't add any widgets to a client's uh, UI. Uh, widgets are always client side. So similarly to how we've done a pass through here to pass it through to the server, uh, we're going to do another pass through on this part, uh, but to pass it back through just to the client. And so what I'll do is uh, drag this over here and disconnect. And I'm going to make a new custom event called client show not enough resources. And uh, I'll set this here to run on owning client and plug it in. And now from the true node here, we'll call that, oops, uh, we'll call this client show not enough resources. Okay, and so I'll just comment this here, uh, client show not enough resources message. Perfect, and uh, so now we'll collapse these nodes here to a macro. And uh, unfortunately, I can't just grab everything here and collapse because you can't collapse an, a, another custom event. So what I'm going to do is just grab everything uh, down here and collapse this part. And uh, we'll just call this um, deduct uh, resource cost. Uh, we'll say deduct uh, unit resource cost. Slide that in here. And uh, we'll move this maybe over here. All right, uh, and a couple things I have to do here uh, before we leave this part is I want to open up this macro. And uh, there's a couple issues here. First of all, on inputs, uh, it has set this class input here to just object type. And that's going to fail later when it tries to get the defaults. Uh, it needs to be set to the parent unit class, class reference. So we'll make that change. Uh, and then also, just for sort of aesthetics here, on the outputs 
node, I can change the name of these outputs. And uh, what I want to do is just uh, indicate that if we're coming off the true pin here, uh, so that's the first output here, and we'll say this is uh, not enough resources. And uh, if we're coming off the other pin here where we've deducted the resources, uh, then we'll just call this one deducted, uh, oops, deducted resources. All right, uh, so that's good. I'm just going to go back to the event graph here. And so now we can see on this macro, it's just a little bit more verbose. We can see we're coming off the not enough resources uh, and we go to the show the message or we come off deducted resources and we go to add the unit to queue. Okay, so that's pretty much done. And uh, the next thing that we'll do here is set up uh, tool tips to show us the actual unit cost. Um, so what we'll do next is uh, open up my buildings folder and the building selected widget. Um, so this is the action box where we populate our production buttons. And uh, if we hover over those, we want to see a tool tip. So I'm going to add here a horizontal box. I'm going to drag it onto the canvas panel, maybe like this area here. Size it up like this. And I'll set the name here to tool tip box and check is variable. And uh, now what I want to do is create uh, a function uh, in our interface that uh, we can use to basically switch the contents of this uh, widget, of this box, I should say. And so what I'll do here is go uh, to the blueprints folder and I'm going to make a new interface. We don't want to use these existing interfaces, either of them, uh, because these other functions aren't really going to be applicable. Uh, it's just for tooltips. So I'll make a new blueprint interface called RTS underscore tooltips uh, underscore interface. All right, and I'll make a new function in here. Let's put that up here. A uh, new function called uh, set tooltip. And for the inputs here, we'll add one. and call it tool tip widget and we'll set the uh, type to a user widget all right uh, and I'll compile that and close and uh, what I want to do next is open up my main uh, parent building class and I'm going to go to class settings here and we'll implement the RTS tooltips interface, compile, and uh, on the event graph here, I'm going to find the new area here and make an event set tooltip. All right, and what we'll do here is grab our uh, building selected widget reference, get tooltip box, and uh, first we'll clear children. Uh, so every time we call this set tooltip, we're going to clear out anything that's already in there. Um, so we can, what we'll do next is see if this tooltip widget that we input is valid. And uh, if it is, we'll add it to the box. So we'll say, we'll grab tooltip box here and say add child. Uh, we can use either of these, add child to horizontal box. And uh, we want to add the, uh, this tooltip widget. We'll just double click here, drag off of that. All right, uh, so we can call set tooltip and we can plug in a widget and it'll set that to the, it'll add that to the uh, tooltip box. Um, and if you call this without plugging any widget in, it'll just do clear the children and uh, that's it. It'll end up here on the not valid pin. Okay, so I'll just comment this uh, set tooltip. And uh, so now all we need to do is make the actual tooltips that we want to populate in that, uh, in that area, the tooltip box. So I'm going to go back to my uh, units folder here. And uh, what I'll do is just right click here and say uh, new user interface widget. And I'll call this uh, unit one underscore tooltip. All right, I'll open that up here. And what I'll do is first set the uh, size here from fill screen to desired on screen. And I'm going to add a, uh, let's start with a horizontal box. And then in the horizontal box, I'm going to put an image. Uh, okay. Uh, and I'll set this image to unit one image. And uh, I'll make the size here maybe 100 by 100. 
And now I'm going to add a uh, vertical box. And I'm going to put that in my horizontal box here. And then I'll add a text. And I'll drag that into my vertical box. All right, I'll click this text here. And I want to set the font uh, size to maybe 18. And the text itself, I'm going to write here uh, unit style 1. And I'm going to drag another text here into the vertical box. And I'll select that and set the font to uh, 12 and typeface to light. Uh, and in the text here, I'm just going to put a sample description. Let's say uh, basic uh, melee attack unit. Um, I'll maybe just say uh, medium attack power and uh, medium armor. All right, I'm just making that up as I go here. I'm also going to find wrap and say wrap text at uh, maybe like 300. Uh, OK, so that looks pretty good. And uh, one more text here. I'm going to drag a text into the vertical box. And I'll select that and set the uh, font here to maybe 16. And uh, under text here, I'll just write cost colon um, 150, I think we had put for that one. All right. And uh, the last thing I'll do is uh, just put some padding between the image and the text here. So I'll grab the image here and uh, just find padding. And we'll put in, say, 5 for padding. All right. And uh, well, one more thing here. I want to make sort of a background around the whole thing here. I'll just grab this horizontal box, uh, right click, uh, wrap with a border. And uh, I'll select this border and find the, uh, oops, expand all categories, uh, find the uh, brush color here. And I'll set the alpha to maybe half, 0.5. And uh, the color we'll just set to like a, sort of a medium blue color here, or whatever color you want, really. Uh, OK, and uh, that's pretty much done here. So what I'm going to do is uh, compile, uh, close, and I'm going to duplicate that a couple of times here. Uh, we'll say uh, Control D, uh, Unit 2 tooltip. And I'll just change the couple of pertinent pieces here, which would be the uh, the image, unit two, oops, uh, unit two image, uh, set it back to 100 by 100, and we'll call this unit style two. Uh, maybe change this to say, uh, we'll call this the basic ranged attack unit, and uh, we'll set the cost here. I think we put it to 200. All right, and uh, so I'll one more of those here for the resource truck. We'll just control D again, uh, resource truck. Uh, Tooltip. All right, and I'll plug in the resource truck image here. Oops. 100 by 100. And uh, change the text here. Uh, we'll say carries uh, 10 resources per trip. And I think we set the cost on that to 100. All right, so I've got my three tooltips made here. And uh, next, what I'm going to do is associate those to my production buttons. And so uh, the production buttons for these units, I actually stashed those here under buildings, under production widgets. Uh, so we'll start with unit style one here. and. What I want to do for each of these is go to the event graph, and off of uh, event construct, we're going to create widget. Uh, and I'll find that appropriate tooltip for each one here, unit one tooltip, and then just promote to a variable called tooltip. Uh, and so I'll repeat that here for both of these. So the next thing I want to do here is add some mouse over uh, and mouse leave events. So I'm uh, just going to find the new spot here on the event graph here. And we'll say mouse uh, enter. And also mouse leave. All right, and for each of these, we're just going to grab our building reference and say uh, set tooltip. Send the set tooltip message. And we'll plug in our tooltip reference. 
Okay. Uh, and then when the mouse leaves, we're going to do uh, the same thing here, building reference, set tooltip, except we're not plugging in any, any tooltip, and so it's just going to clear the box. Uh, and so what I can do here is just grab all of these nodes and control C and go paste these in my other two uh, widgets. Unit 2 widget here, uh, drag this up to here, and the unit 1 widget, drag that up to there. Okay, so I've adjusted uh, or I've added this uh, functionality basically for each of our produce unit uh, widgets uh, on mouse enter and mouse leave. And so uh, let's go check it out here and see if it's working. Got an error in the parent building class here. Let's check it out. Uh, okay, tooltip box. What's it saying here? Read the value of variable tooltip box. Uh, maybe I didn't compile that. Let's see, building selected widget. Uh, tooltip box here, compile, uh, building class, compile. Uh, well, it seems to be fine now. So I'm not sure. Okay, uh, let's play. And I'll host here. And what I'll do actually, I'm just going to uh, go back quickly to my player, uh, sorry, my resource truck uh, blueprint. I'm just going to open that up here if I can find it. Uh, and I'm going to find the uh, area here where we increment the resource amount. And I'm just going to increase our capacity of the truck here to 50. Let's say we're bringing back 50 per, uh, per go, just for testing here to make it quicker. All right, so uh, we've got our not enough resources message. Uh, we'll try to mine some resources here. Uh, okay, and we've got our tooltips. This is uh, good. Uh, we'll try to make a, a unit here, and yes, it's uh, deducted our cost here. Try again, try again, and perfect. So that seems to be working. I'm going to go and join as a client here. We've got a bit more centered UI here when we're in a proper client window. And so, yeah, the tooltips is working great on mouse over. And uh, we've got our not enough resources message working. And uh, when we have adequate resources, we'll, uh, of course, be able to make uh, our units here. Let's check it out. Perfect. Okay, so that's pretty much it uh, for this video. We've introduced a cost for uh, units, and we've introduced a couple of UI elements, including uh, tool tips when we hover over our unit production buildings. Uh, all right, well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.